Huge shout out to our partner, Dr. Price's Vitamins, for hooking us up with a promo code, Out of System 20, to get 20% off on their website. Link is down in the description below. Myself, Micah, Gage are using this product all summer. It's awesome. The electrolytes are sweet. Booyakasha! Welcome back to another episode of If You Can't Handle the Heat. Today, it's just me, baby. It's just me, the Swizz. Uh, Micah, I have not been... Pfft, who knows where Micah is? Joe's at practice, practicing for the king of the beach, baby. For, I mean, not the king. King of the court, not king of the beach. For those of you who don't know what that is, I'm going to explain to you the shenanigans, the insanity, the craziness of the king of the court. And what I mean by that is, in Europe, Okay. They have this thing called King of the Court. And I don't know if it's FIVB or not. And what it is is basically for those volleyball listeners out there, it's it's King of the Court, literally, like that, but in beach. So they give you time installments. And, and I don't know the exact rules, but they give you like times. Okay. So you get five teams. And you get like, I don't know, around 20 minutes, I want to say. And however many points you get on the king's side, not by going under the king's side, but literally on the king's side, right? They're so actually playing king of the court. And the highest, I want to say, two, three, like I said, I'm not very familiar with it, but I've seen it. Um, two, three people advance until the championship, until like the championship, and then the highest person with the highest score wins the entire thing, right? So I think there's two, maybe three rounds to the championship that you got to get like top three in. And I think maybe the semis is like top two or something. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. So Joe, about three, maybe by now it's like five days ago. Five days ago, gets a phone call from his friend Stein Van Tilburg for our wife listeners out there. Stein rings him up. He's like, "What's up, bro? How you doing?" Stein goes, "Hey man, what you been up to? What you we obviously Joe plays in Germany, right? Stein plays in Germany. Have you? He's like, have you ever heard of the King of the Court? Just like, yeah, I've heard of it. Seen it on YouTube. It looks really, really fun. All the top players in the world playing it." And he goes like, well, <laughs> I know the, the, uh, the owner of King of the Court, I think, because I think it was from out of the Netherlands, I want to say, or maybe, well, this event's in Germany, so maybe it's out of Germany, I don't know. And he goes, he's like, well, a, a team, or maybe it was a couple teams, dropped out, and he wanted me to find, and he, he allowed me, to, and I asked, I was like, hey, I can play. And he's like, I want, or I need to find a great partner to play with. And he's like, so I asked you. And Joe just started dying laughing. Basically, Stein's asking him to partner up for the king of the court. Okay? For the king of the freaking court. Okay, that's madness. Sorry, that was Joe calling me. Madness. So what happens is Joe agrees to this. And now Joe is literally being put in because Anders Mole and Christian Sorum dropped out. They're being put as like damn near the one seed. And they are in a pool with a bunch of Olympic volleyball players. And the other pools, there's like three other pools around there. Olympic top, the literally the top players in the world. It's insane. It's insane. Insane. So Joe, and Stein Van Tilburg, Joe hasn't played in seven years, beach volleyball in seven years, is going out there and playing in this tournament. We haven't played for seven years. And Stein, I don't even know how Stein is. I think Joe will probably force this, this, but we never play doubles. Never. So uh, it'll be live streamed for those listening out there. But by then, it'll be maybe probably too late for us. But uh, uh, I'll, be, I'll be going live and watching it with whoever wants to do that with me. Um, but I'm excited, man. He can't wear the out of some shorts. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's what's happening. And then Micah is about to send off to Poland. He tried to find a heat for the Manhattan Beach Open. He couldn't find a partner because he just couldn't find a partner. So he's not playing it. So he's just going to watch it. Probably watch Donna too. But it's not what this podcast is about. First of all, Joe's vlogging that King of the Court, by the way. So expect a video. This podcast is about the TJ DeFalco. We decided to hit up our friend TJ DeFalco. We're like, you know what? Maybe painful, but I think a lot of people want to know the scoops on what happened with the Olympics. TJ's our boy, and uh, we're going to try and get him on the pod. He's like, absolutely. We hit him up, get him on the pod, breaking down what happened in the Olympics, what's in the future for him, playing the Manhattan Beach Open, and uh, it'll be a good one. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you TJ DeFalco. Yeah. You can, you can we are now joined here by U.S. outside hitter, standout Long Beach X Shark, and now an Olympian, <laughs> TJ DeFalco. TJ, thanks for hopping on the show with us today, brother. 
How are we doing, Thanks man? Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, how do you feel about the shark? Doing well, oh, hanging in. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll let you go. Let's go. There's a little lag. Sorry. Um, sharks. I don't even know where to begin with that. But it's better than the other two options. I believe it was the other two options were giraffes <laughs> or the mice. I think. So sharks are probably the better out of all those options. And do they leave it up to the student athletes to choose, or who do they leave? Well, first of all, who comes up with these uh, these mascots for for Long Beach? No idea who came up with them. Um, but they left it up to the student body to vote. So okay. everybody, so all 50,000 people got to vote and it came down to drafts, I guess. Would you vote? I didn't. Oh. I was like, I'm out of here. It doesn't matter to me. I'm I would, good. I would have said giraffes. Personally, that's a personal <laughs> choice. Just to mess with them. <laughs> um, anyways, well, first things first, man, you're playing the Manhattan Beach Open this weekend, yeah? Yeah, super late notice, super late, uh, like heads up and just got picked up. Like Nick texted me on Monday morning. It's like, hey, it fills out kind of thing. Uh, or do you want to play this weekend? I was like, of course. I would, I'd love to step into that position. And so I've kind of been riding that wave of serotonin and dopamine. Just like, dude, I get Nick Lucena texted me, asked me to play. That's so sad. Let's go. Let's get it. That's so sad. What happened to Phil? I have no idea. I have uh, no, okay. no deets on, the, on that stuff. So you're blocking. So you're blocking this weekend, yeah? Uh, I'm doing like a 90-10 blocking. So every once in a while, we'll have him block. What's the reason for that? D? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, like split blocking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, because we're both defenders. That's true. And if if and there's both, uh, both, both a lot of upset to having defenders back there, but then also he's like, if we're being aggressive with our serves and you just jump serve and go up, then that's fine. But if we're playing like downwind where we're going to play, play tactically, he's like, I'll, I'll block and we'll play that way. That's so sick. That's and you guys are practice together. I'm guessing, yeah. We practiced uh, the last two days together. Is all yeah. we played together. How's that been? Uh, well, for, this is my first time in this in competitive sand in five years. Oh my, my god! My last tournament <laughs> was the Manhattan Beach Open five years ago, 2016. That's so sick. So uh, a little, a little nervous, a little shaky. But I had, I mean, I completely have to rewire my brain to be beach mindset as like as opposed to broad jumping, going fast, flying on the bake, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's a little bit of a rewire and a little bit of process, but man, I'm loving being back on the beach. It's so great. That's so sick. So, uh, <laughs> so, so what we did in our store before, and we'll get to a, a lot of the other questions, um, after, I mean, at, at, at the end of our podcast here, but one of the questions everyone asking is, are you going to switch from, well, when's the switch eventually, if there is going to be a switch from the indoor to the outdoor game? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can imagine that that's been on the mind lately, especially with all this COVID situation stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure yet. I'm not, I'm not, I, you know, there's little thoughts here and there, but those are being compartmentalized pretty heavily um, because I know right. how enjoyable it is, but then also just the money, man. It's so hard yeah. to be in a position where you're six through eight or six through whatever, 40 on the, on the beach list. And you're just kind of struggling to make it work, make ends meet. But I could be in my position now in, in the indoor scene and I'm fine. You know, yeah. I'm, ma I'm making a solid living and, 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 and I still get to play the sport. So it's, it's just like a toss up of, when I get my all my stuff together, or if it's the decision based of I'm kind of over indoor, over not playing in front of any fans. Um, so I don't know. I'm thinking maybe LA, but I mean that's a super unofficial, that's no true. idea. But we'll we'll see. Would you have considered? What's up, TJ? Sorry, it's my first time talking. I've I'll let you engage. <laughs> so go what? Back the, he's in Germany right now. What time is it in Germany yeah. now, Joe? It's like 6 a.m. I, TJ, <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you. Tonight, I have to play the King of the Court event. Um, and we got in like, <laughs> we got in a loaded pool with the top uh, Brazilian and top Polish team. That I have to go practice this morning, actually at the tennis stadium. <laughs> so I'm up early too. <laughs> wow. But, but uh, I think you're going to have way more success. Than, I'm playing with Stein von Tilburg. Um Oh, that's sweet. And so <laughs> we're going to that today. But I have a question for you: how much, uh, how much interest would you have had in play or trying to qualify with Micah in the qualifier this week? If he would have asked you earlier, or if he would have planned and you didn't have a partner, would that have been something that crossed your mind? Uh, uh absolutely. Um, there's just like, working out with, um with the timeline with like getting my visa to go to Poland and then also spending time with the family that was kind of like, I, cause I got asked by another, another person to play in the Manhattan six man or in the six man, sorry, the, the ADP this weekend. <laughs> and he, and I was like, I, it's not gonna work out with the way that I got to go up and see family for a couple more, a couple, couple more days. And then I'm out. 
So it's not going to work out. But then it just, things changed, and then Nick hit me up, and so I was like, oh, wow, this kind of is the best-case scenario. Um, so in, I don't know. I would have thought uh, playing with Mike would have been a blast. It would have been a blast because we would have full split and just went out there and just been weird, and it would have been great. Um, yeah, that would have been that would have been real fun, I think. We get a lot of yeah. I don't know. We we opened up for questions. We got all kinds of ridiculous questions. That was definitely. I think I saw that as one of them. So I had to ask that. Yeah. Well, so so you're going off to Poland right now. I mean, when when do you leave for Poland? Um. Well, it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to report like the 25th, the 26th, something like that. Okay. Um, but I don't have my date. My date to get my go into the consulate and get my visa is September 15th. Oh my! Wait. Holy so, crap! A little bit of an offset. So we're we're still trying to figure all that out, expedite expedition processes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mike, I'm trying to have my club call all the consulate here and deal with all that stuff and look for the Polish people. But I have no idea. So a lot of stuff is up in the air. So I'm going to my first uh, year of a professional. Obviously, I just, since I just graduated, and uh, uh-huh. one thing that Joe kind of said to me, and this is this is why I was like I was like I wonder if he's going to go back to the or that's why I asked you that question about the beach was because Joe said something. He's like every year I leave USA, it just gets kind of harder and harder because it's like you know you realize how good you have it in USA. I mean I don't know. Um, I'll soon find out, but like, like that's why I kind of asked that question. Um, but I mean you went you lived you played in Italy the last two seasons, yeah. Yeah. So. I want to kind of go into a, a, I want to kind of segue that into kind of the Olympics here. Um, well, first things first, congratulations on your first Olympics, man. That's so sick. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. I mean, so so you can you talk to our because our listeners sometimes aren't very familiar in how kind of the Olympic process works, how they gets chosen or whatnot. So I know you went to VNL. Uh, can you kind of give a breakthrough of how they choose the roster, when they choose a roster, and then what happens like after they choose a roster? Do the guys get sent home and whatnot, and kind of the process and scheduling? That kind of goes about uh, when it comes to choosing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in the beginning of the summer, there's this thing called a preliminary roster that is named, and I believe it's, I believe both of you guys are even on that roster. Um, it, yeah. It's like a roster of 35 to 40 people. That is like that's kind of the core group of the national team that's going to be training throughout the summer in Anaheim. Um, and so from there, that then the roster gets picked of the travel roster to go to like the VNL tournament, like you said. And this year was weird because it was a VNL bubble. So it was, we were allowed to take 20 players. So then that list got brought down to 20 from 40. And then from there on, it was like kind of playing, evaluating the coach is going to have to make their decision. Uh, June 15th was the decision was made and it was cut down to 12 players. Um, everything was based off the coach's decision, the coaching staff, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then a few of the players right after that requested to leave the bubble because the bubble was kind of, kind of, I don't know the best way to put it. It was a lot because it was 37 days in a hotel, not leaving, only playing volleyball, not doing anything outside. You know, you're in this beautiful country, you're on the beach, can't do anything. So a couple of the players had asked to depart early because they knew that they didn't make the roster um, and they would, where they wished to start their vacation time early. Mm-hmm. But even some of those guys were alternates, which this year is very, was funky for alternates because of the COVID situation that if a guy got, tested positive and had to be out for 14 to 21 days immediately we'd have an alternate come in usually in years past alternates were very rare cases of serious injury that the player could not perform All right so the, the alternates still had to continue training and were in the gym after vnl had ended and so that's kind of how all that process worked with all that stuff okay so, so one thing I didn't realize until I think it was like Lauren Carlini said, like you said, that the roster gets chosen, and some guys, like you said, try to go home. Or, but a lot of time you're still with those guys that weren't get chosen. What is it like ever? I mean, obviously those are your brothers, those are your boys. Is it a little awkward at all? Because I mean, you just, someone's dream is crushed, and then your dream is made. You know, so is it ever like awkward in like yeah. the hotel or like kind of around? If if it's a, like, I mean, what's it like the atmosphere? Um, uh, just like with anything. I think uh, every person's processing of that kind of stuff is different. Yeah. Um, so one, one of them, one of my close buddies that I hang out with all the time, I still hang out with, was bummed that he didn't make it. Obviously, that, that's kind of like like you said, making the dream or breaking the dream. But then also was excited for the fact that his buddies were there and that was, that was the team that made it. But then mm-hmm. he was also excited about the downtime because this last 10 months has been volleyball, 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 volleyball. And so it was, it was a nice little 
um, break in the mindset to have like, you know, I'm excited to go on a vacation for two and a half weeks or three weeks or whatever it's been, you know what I mean? So, but then the, the, another guy that didn't make, didn't make the cut was like devastated and still is. And I, and totally understandable because like you said, the situation, but it's just, that's the two ends of the spectrum with processing, not making the Olympic team. Yeah. That's just gotta be, that's insane. Cause like you said, you are like, you guys are brothers and everything like that. And you've gone through so much for the, the last quad or even longer. So, but like you said, it's good to, the good that you guys have that kind of like brothership where it's like you're happy for each other. But I mean, have you have you heard any stories where it's like kind of like a horror story, whether it's like your country or, or USA or like not another country, like crazy stories of, of people not making and they kind of get a little crazy or anything like that? Mm, no, I haven't. That's good. Talked to anybody about yeah, no, don't think so. So when you first go to the Olympics, right? I mean, first of all, the, I mean, can you now you kind of broke down the scheduling of how you get picked? Now from then, right, in VNL. And then what kind of happens? Because I know, I mean, the Olympics probably was a funky year. I mean, through, you only see, from our point of view, the viewer's point of view, you only see so much. But, like, like behind the scenes from the beginning, I'm sure it was kind of weird. I mean, not that, I mean, this is obviously your first Olympics, hopefully first of many. Um, so, and I don't know, from the guys who had experience, like, did they kind of say, this is kind of weird, they're doing this or doing this? Or, like, what was kind of the schedule from when you first kind of arrived in the village or kind of arriving, did they test you, like, every other day? And then from the first point of the first match, so kind of what was your schedule? Yeah, I mean, everything about, I mean, for the last two years, year and a half, two years, whatever it's been, has been unique. Right. So every single thing about this Olympics is is its own experience. Um, because we started, we went out to travel, we went to Japan early to travel, acclimate, and try to get some training in mm -hmm. before our first match. And so we were in this town called Mishima, which is about an hour and a half west of Japan. So we were out there training with the national team of Japan and doing all that kind of stuff to try and but the processing to get into the airport and you had to do like probably six or seven hours of stuff before we even got on the plane here and then when we landed we were in the airport and going through tests doing you know screenings background checks all the, the paperwork all the different stuff we had to and then we had to go sit in a room in the airport so we we, we spent time in the japanese airport about four and a half hours because of all the testing and everything that was going on and then we were finally after a 12 hour flight. So you're finally off the plane and then you got to wait in this airport because of all the testing and all that stuff. And then we finally got to leave and it's 7 PM, something like that. Um, and then we have a three hour bus ride to, to go to the, that, that city. And the beginning of this process is just awful. And then we finally get to start. And the next day we have training at 9 AM, like training and weights at 9 AM. So then it's like, all right, we're hitting the ground running. We're here. We're jet lagged. We feel like crap. All right, let's go. We're here because it's the Olympics. Right. Um, and then we train, 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 all the way until like, like a week later, we report to the village. And it's the same same kind of process. We have to go in, get screened, do all our paperwork, do all this kind of stuff, get tested, get all the tests has to be waiting, and processed, and all this kind of stuff. And then we get access to the village. And nothing goes in and nothing comes out of the village that just doesn't, they don't know about. Right. So they we go we go through metal detectors like like things at the airport like that scans the bags. They go in and look at your bags, kind of check what you're taking in and out. And it's just it was just a gnarly experience all around. Really? So like, so I know you guys stayed in the Olympic Village or outside? Sorry for that. God, sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. We did both. In the beginning, okay. we stayed outside the village in that other city, and then we stayed in the, the Olympic Village. And so. Could you see, could you go with other athletes or no? Because usually I know there's like conversing with other athletes, but is in the Olympic Village was it like people were more strict because they're like I can't ruin this one chance, or there people out out and about kind of doing whatever they wanted to do or what? There was a little bit of both, um, like because people uh, athletes in like our event, where where there's like they took, played one day off one day, play one day off one day. It's kind of like the whole Olympics, but there are other athletes that trained for four years for an event that lasted three hours. Jesus. So the, their event was one day, and that they're done. So uh, whenever those events started, based on that, their their actions and their attitudes and their behaviors before the event were like super locked in. Eat, go to the dining hall, and come back to the room, and then I'm like, then that's it. But then there are other like our sports. There was thousands of people walking around having a good time. There's a bunch of the little activities outside. There's like a park and like a pirate ship right next to our our building. You could go out and walk around, but it was the only thing was it was probably 95 degrees, 80 oh, percent humidity. Felt like 105 the whole time. Right. So it, you don't want to, really want to spend very much time outside. 
so and you could talk with other athletes it, it, what, how, as much as you wanted everyone has the masks on everyone has their distancing all that kind of stuff but then also they made it um where you downloaded this app on your smart on your phone to know like like contact tracing to ultimate like they know exactly how far away your phone was and if anybody pings around you if that happens to test positive you get a notification and you get sent out of the village into a hotel for 10 days because you're close contact jeez that's so you could it. do that, but they know everything that you're doing, where your phone is, all this kind of stuff. When we go to practice, we'd have to set our backpacks six feet apart in case one of us, whatever, all like uh, was pinged. We would not be close contact, even though we were practicing together. It's, it was insane. Okay. Damn. If you just leave your phone at the uh, at the <laughs> at your room, does that, or do you have to have your phone on you at all times? <laughs> you have to have your phone on you at all times. They made, it was like that, and your credential was like your okay. key into the gating of the village. That's wild. So let's, let's get into the tournament a little here. Uh, well, first things first, I want to – no, we'll get into that in a second. I want to get the tournament first. So first things first, you play France first, 3-0, right? What do you think – well, first off, what do you think when you're going to the tournament, obviously, a lot of people were talking about you, you know, Aaron Russell wasn't there, so I was like, all right, TJ has to step up or whatnot. Personally, I thought you were fine. Um, but you know, how, you know how the press is and the media is sometimes and people have their opinions on stuff. But what did you? Would, I mean, that probably didn't even cross your mind. But what thing did you realize? Okay, I got Matt to my right here. I got Taylor with everyone. I got all this experience around me. What do you think you, you had to do? Like, what was your role kind of going into the Olympics? Personally, did you think? Yeah, um, I definitely had to do with a lot of that in the beginning of, of, the, of our training block. It's yeah. like, oh shit, Aaron's not here, and everybody and their mom is thinking, oh, can he do it? Can he step up? <laughs> can he fill these shoes? You know, and, and if I had to deal with that, and I ended up being having the chance to talk with the team about it. And all of them were surprised. Like, dude, we don't think you're Aaron Russell in any way, shape, or form. We're not expecting you to be. You know, he he does some incredible things. I can't I can't be six eight overnight. You know, that's not something I'm able to do. But I can do other things that maybe he can't. And so that was that was the mindset that the teammates right. helped me to see. It was like, dude, you're gonna do the you're, the you're here for a reason. Do go out there and do you. And so that was calming for me to go out there and be like dude my team trusts me my team supports me uh and i'm gonna go out there and do everything i can if that's my ability right and i think yeah for sure for sure i think it's the best for those i think i think that we talk about this podcast i think mike could bring it up one time it's like you see teams or or the teams that do the best or the teams that um do the worst right teams that do the best are going to focus on themselves and what they kind of have the teams that don't do as well folks in the outside environments whether it's the other team the media, what everyone's saying, all those thoughts in your head, you know. Yeah. And I think I, th- I think you handled. I mean, not that my opinion matters or anything like that, but I think I think you handled <laughs> it pretty really well, just from a viewer standpoint. I think uh, everyone watching would agree. So three L versus France. You guys are feeling pretty good about yourself right about now. And then the second game, I believe, was in the ROC, yeah, Russia. Yeah. So what would you say? I mean, from your viewpoint, I know you guys had him. I think it was in was in the second game, and then you guys have him also in the. You guys have him in the. The fourth game, I remember, you guys were up, and you guys had him in the second game. What kind of, what, what, do, what do you think kind of led, the domino effect kind of led to you kind of uh, dropping that match, in, in your opinion? That's a tough question. I get that. That's a loaded no, question right there. I, I kind of, I tried to forget a lot about a lot of those matches. No, um, I get it. I get it. No, you're good. Uh, I think a lot of the, lot, for both of those matches, both Russia and Brazil, uh, there was a lot of opportunities that we weren't as crisp as they were with. Right. If that makes sense. There was no, yeah. there was some free balls that we didn't take care of. Um, there was some execution. There's a, a ton of serving errors the entire tournament. I know yeah. everybody and their mom also knows about that. So yeah. uh, there's just like – there's some volleyball maturity things that really uh, affected our results. Yeah. Uh, and And – and you can't – well, you can. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you can win with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. However, if it's a process that keeps repeating itself match after match after match, then it gets into some, some muddy waters. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that was one of the main things. With the execution there and that second – the end of that second set, we, we got comfortable, got complacent. And then also in the fourth set, we were just like, okay, we're, we have a two-point – well, I don't remember the exact number. Two-point, three-point lead or something like that against this team. Okay, awesome. And then – which is the complete worst mindset to have against a team like Russia or Brazil, the yeah. gnarliest teams in the world. So um, stuff like that. Um, also, 
it's it was a complete sh shift in the mindset from night one against France because we yeah. came in not knowing anything, expecting to be like this out there shaking, playing volleyball, not really seeing straight, um, figuring it out really early and just cruising with that. And then all of a sudden, hey, the other team also did the same thing the first match too. They got their yeah. shakies out. They're good. They're acclimated. They're fine. How are you going to beat one of the best teams in the world at their best? You know, and so it's just a lot of that stuff. 100%. 100%. I think, you know, I had a lot of people come up to me and they were like, like, why are they watching the game? I was like, why are they missing so many serves? I was like, it's a tough line because, or it's it's, it's tough because it's like, okay, what are you going to do? Just, you got to hit your best serve, one. Like, that's the number one thing, again. But at the same time, if you don't hit your best serve and you're serving Russia across the net, big boys that can just, you're going to put the ball down. So I think that was that was kind of a, like, people come up to me. I was like, I was like, I don't know, that's kind of tough. It's like, do you back off? Do you not back off? Was that kind of like, was it kind of discussed within the team or within the coaches? Like, do we kind of back off? It was always like, we got to go guns a blade in here, and that's where we're going to die by the sword, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Or was that kind of the yeah. mindset or what? No, the mindset that, that John always preached was go hit your best serve. We don't right. need to have uh, – we, we had a term called primal. We don't need to be going primal where we're just seeing red and just clubbing balls. We don't need to do that. We need to hit our best serve and for, and for the comfortability of the toss, the approach, the – the rhythm in the match, all those things play an effect to that. Um, but then it was also hit your best serve. And so right. I don't think, uh, I don't think I did that. I don't think it, a lot of us did that in this certain situations. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Um, and that's all I got on that. But uh, the serving, serving philosophy was always hit your best serve. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's, it's sometimes it's going to be your day. Sometimes it's not going to be your day. So I respect yeah. the send for sure. Um, <laughs> But so let's kind of go off the before we, before we finish the tournament. We'll kind of go off the court. How was like the? Uh, I mean, I mean, what was the experience like at the Olympics? Like, like what was the experience? What was your favorite non volleyball activity? Was there like a kind of a break? Because obviously, I mean, there's so much stress surrounding the Olympics. Do they give you? Is there like kind of a stressor that you guys had within your team to kind of take your mind off the volleyball, right? Especially things aren't going your way, and because because it can just be like physically and mentally. Like, I mean, what is it? Two weeks? You guys are there from the beginning to the end, competing and. Yeah. The biggest, the biggest matches of your life. So, what did you guys kind of do off the off the court that kind of helped, whether it's food or not food, or anything? Um, yeah, we th there was very little to do, if anything, to do because of the sheer amount of people that were in the village. Mm -hmm. There was about eleven thousand people, something like that, ten thousand people, whatever the number was, in the yeah. village. And the only thing to do locally was dining hall. Mm -hmm. You could go outside and create some games if you wanted, but there was no like uh big activities for any of us to do so the one thing that we did and also because of the ac in the room was stay in the room and me and kyle instinct played almost about as much call of duty as we did play volleyball <laughs> you bring your xbox or ps4s what did you guys bring i brought my computer ah, and he brought his that. xbox that's sick so we were, we were just that that was our release for sure i don't know i can't really say for the other guys because i don't it wasn't i was just been locked in my screen the whole time uh but we had that was our release from the stress of maybe losing a game or win, or the the hype winning a game or you know the the worry about practice or anything like that 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 was the way we got away from that right i think that's so key that's one thing that i kind of learned and especially i think joe big man over here learned when when he was growing up is like you need something that kind of takes your stressor off cuz if you're constantly yeah. thinking about something you're only going to make it worse when you hop back into it all right, I know. I know you probably don't want to. You probably try and not think about this. So you probably don't want to revisit it too much. So I'm not going to ask too many questions. But I know our, our listeners want to know about the Argentina match. Um, I think. I think that. Obviously, going in the match. I mean, everything probably did. Did I mean, probably didn't. But did, did everything kind of feel the same? Were you guys confident? I mean, obviously you're confident. But did, did something feel off at all, or was like, or you guys just kind of zoned in, kind of normal, per usual? Uh, well, we were definitely very far from normal. Uh, and that's that was probably blatant for anybody wa that watched and has watched right. ne maybe never watched volleyball in their lives knew that something was off um, the sheer amount of stress that we placed on ourselves and that was put upon us as a team um, overtook any type of mental cognitive process mm -hmm. it was it was sheer it was a sheer breakdown um, mentally yeah. of the our ability to play volleyball yeah. So I'm not taking anything away from the way that they played because they came out ready to go and they punched us many times in the jaw and knocked us over. Uh, and they played incredible. They're an incredible team, obviously. Yeah. But uh, that match goes a lot different if 
more than half of our team performs the way they should have. Right. You know, so, and that's all I'll say about that. It was probably already a little too, too edgy to be saying, but eh, fuck no, it. no it's, our, it's gone. It's done. It's all good. I like it. I think, I think, I mean, it's gotta be, do you have, has anyone been like an asshole coming up to you about like, like or been like in the beach or anything? Has anyone like been an asshole about you like coming up and like, oh, blah, blah, this or blah, blah. I should have done this or should have done that at all. I mean, or have you, you probably like, I mean, I assume after we just kind of just stay off your phone, just like screw this, I'm, I'm over this kind of thing. Yeah, I've been there. There's, there's definitely a period of time where I didn't look at my phone for a couple, like Instagram or anything like that. I didn't yeah. do that for a couple of days. It was just because I knew I was going to see something, and yeah. I just didn't want to see it. Um, but thankfully, I haven't talked to anybody in person uh, cool. about any of that kind of stuff, which is nice. But I've gotten uh, lots of messages on Instagram about about that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's just interesting that people like. It's People weird, that will probably it? never be in any type of competitive sport in their entire life have the balls to say something like that to someone who's at the top. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's no, just no, I get it. No, 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 preach. Yeah, I get it. I think, I think <laughs> it's interesting because, like, sometimes you get more fans get more mad than the actual players. Not like they, they care more, but it's like interesting. They just get like way more butthurt than the actual players themselves. And I think that's the most interesting thing. Like, I'm just like, dude, I was like, you would not say, there's no way you'd go and say that to their face. I was like, I would, yeah, exactly. I would like, I would love to see you actually say that to that guy's face. Cause there's no way I was like, you go out there and go do that. Like, come on now. I mean like shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, well, you, you handle it awesome and everything like that. Um, but one thing I want to talk about is we've been playing against each other. Me, you, Joe, Micah, I've been playing against each other since we were what? Like I was like 12 years old. The first time we played. Yeah, 12. That's crazy. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. Um, we've had battles ever since literally from, from here and all the way up, this has been awesome. Just seeing each other grow. And I think yeah. one thing, one thing that people ask, come talk to me. They say about TJ, they're like, hey, is TJ a nice guy? I'm like, yeah, TJ's great. Why do, why do you ask? Why do you ask? He's like, he seems intense on the court. And I think, and I was like, yeah, I mean, he seems intense, but I mean, he's in, he's like one of the, the goofiest guys off the court. Like I said, just playing COD on, on his computer all the time. Yeah. Or just playing cards in the back of the bus or whatever. But I think, one thing that I think that I realized about kind of a, a, a common or I can relate to you with is, when, it, when I was younger, right, and, and like I said, we've been playing each other since a young age, is that sometimes I think we had to mature in different ways. For me, for, for I think for us, basically, when we were younger, I think sometimes the anger, right, kind of got the best of us. Or sometimes we'd be like, oh, we kind of, uh, like I say, chirp at a team act. Because I noticed sometimes when you were young, when we were 14 years old, people would be like, oh, TJ's bad attitude about this, TJ's bad attitude about that. And sometimes I was younger like that. And I think... Yeah one way and, and I think well for me I'll, I'll, I'm gonna let you kind of talk on how you kind of grew and kind of had kind of channel that anger in a different way and then I kind of talk about myself here but what, in what way did you kind of have to grow up and kind of realize you're like okay probably have to kind of take a step back here kind of realize what's what what, what the body language I'm kind of giving off because maybe, maybe you disagree maybe maybe you don't think you did any of that and that that's completely yep. that's, that's that's your opinion there but I just want to hear like in what ways did you think you had to grow and in what ways do you think that's your it, it's it's not how it kind of comes off all the way. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely a level of the way that I acted that when I was a young kid, like back when we used to play each other, um, that was complete nonsensical and a complete asshole, hundred percent, hundred percent. But the, w with maturity, like you said, becomes the the understanding of the perception and the mm -hmm. and the real, um, and then also like everybody else's feelings about that kind of stuff is not everyone can process it the same way. Not everyone thinks the same way I do. So there's going right. to be some differences in, in the, in the, uh, the understanding. Um, but then also it was about pure maturity and the fact that dude, you're being an asshole, like just realize that you're being an asshole. Right. Right. Um, and they, so it grew from that to understanding that and then trying to find different ways to channel it, like you said. Yeah. Um, and then that shifted pretty heavily when I got to long beach because my freshman year I come in, me, Josh, and Kyle, and there's three seniors that we just took their spots. And we're getting right. insane amount of chirp, like, hey, like, you shouldn't be, like, and, like, just total negative attitude. And so then it was nowhere near any of our places to get mad at anybody. So that was when it was kind of, and then it grew, and, and then it was purely an under. it was, for me, it was an understanding of the perception of people think that I'm being, and I, all these call the comments that I read out, there's going to be comments on this video. There's going to be comments on the, all the other YouTube videos about how bad I am of a teammate I am and the chirping and all that kind of stuff. But in college, that was when it really shifted for me was that I, there was a hundred percent something I could have done better in that play. And yeah. so I was getting mad at myself and it appeared that I was being negative toward all my other teammates right. and stuff like that. 
Oh, I get that. Um, and and there's there's so many examples of comments. And there's a there's a video of me in the in the 2017 finals or something like that, where I I'm, I'm on a serving run and my little bear comes up and like puts his arm around me and I push his arm off because I'm in on I'm in a serving run and I'm in the zone and I'm I'm ready to continue All executing right. and, and win this game finish this game out and, and there's like comment like look at the timestamp he's such a bad teammate he's an asshole blah 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 all this kind of stuff yeah like, no one is ever going to look three seconds before that and or a minute before that and see that i'm on a run or anything like that so it's uh -huh. about perception it's about letting that shit go out of my mind because that, that that guy's comment doesn't matter you know his, his his opinion doesn't matter um and the people one one quote that my dad always uses the people that know no and that's all that matters really yeah so um it's been a huge growing process and an understanding of that, but then also understanding that people don't know sometimes and there's no yeah. point to even invest any of my mental energy into that kind of stuff because, you know, so it's, it has been a, been a balance of things. No, sure. I get it because some, it's always like you said, it's all these people that don't know, that don't understand. Like, like sometimes like when you're in the zone, it's like when you're throwing a perfect game, no one's going up to the guy and like, just patting him on the back and like the seventh or eighth, ninth inning, yeah. you know, you're leaving him be. <laughs> That's the same thing. When someone's serving serve on you, like, Hey, good job. Leave him be. Let him do his thing yeah. back there. And I think, like you said, the people who know that understand that. But there's going to be always haters out there who have no idea what they're talking about. I just want to wrap up really quickly. Again, thank you so much for your time, TJ. Again, we yeah, asked man. a bunch of people anything, T any, any questions for TJ. And I got, I think, around 70 or 80 responses here. So I'm just going to go kind of go at random here, kind of rapid <laughs> fire in a way. All right. Most impressive player you played against with or against in Italy? In Italy? Uh, well, Fred Leon, 100%. Okay. Would you ever consider playing sand with Taylor Crab? Uh, no, because that means I have to be a blocker. Ooh, that's true. <laughs> Who's your all-time favorite teammate? Favorite teammate? Uh, I'd say Kyle Lindsay or Josh. Okay. What is the discipline difference between international club versus collegiate? Uh, <laughs> you really have to learn how to. You really have to mature and learn how to take care of yourself. You have to do your own laundry. <laughs> and do, you have to do everything by yourself. So <laughs> learn how to be an adult. How about, here? here's a dicey question. Do you have a better connection with Micah Christensen or Josh Tuiniga? Mm. Child I'd, say they, I, I'd say that they're different. They're different connections. Perfect answer. Because of the contact points. So I'm going right. to say they're different, and I have a, the best connection with both of them. Okay, last question here. Which color Team USA jersey is your favorite? Ooh, that's a good question. I'd say the red. 100%. I think the, I think that looks the sleekest. I, I, the white looks pretty good, though. I mean, how'd you like the Olympic jerseys, though? How'd you like the Olympic ones? They were – I like the design on them. They're pretty cool designs. Um, but the material was also decent, but not the best I've ever had. So it was – but, I mean, they were so incredible. 100%. 100%. Well, you guys look slick out there, my man. Hey, good luck this weekend, man. I'm going to be watching. We're pumped for you, man. Yeah, man We're going to be excited. watching. Uh, hopefully you see Micah before us. Make sure he's alive for us. Uh, we'll try and get a hold of him. But, again, hey, thanks I'll so much for the time you. and everything. And uh, good luck this weekend, brother. We'll be yeah, watching, boys, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for good having luck, me. Good luck, my man. Cheers, man. Always a pleasure talking back, reminiscing with TJ DeFalco. And also learning about the Olympics, man. I mean... Well, first off, Joe, what were your first impressions on it? On the interview itself. The interview is good. I think I had some thoughts like at the end there regarding him, his uh, personality really quick because we get a ton of questions about that in comments and stuff because we've yeah. we've all played with him. We've played against him, since, like you're saying, since we were like 12. Um, and I, the one thing I always say is like at the end of the day, you just have to realize like, his mindset He's ultra competitive, just like everybody else. And at the end of the day, he just wants to win and he wants to be successful. And I think people forget that sometimes and they get offended. But it's like, dude, at the highest level, like, you got to, I mean, there's just like so, so much pressure and everything. And that's like at the end of the day, he, and you know, he'll show up when it counts and he's a baller and stuff. And that's just, he just wants to win at the end of the day. And I think once you realize that, everything else, you just kind of, I don't know. It's not. It's not that much. You don't think about it too much. I think people get overworked up about things. It's like, dude, that guy, his teammate just did something really, really dumb in some situations, like stuff that you can't do if you want to win at the highest level. And so somebody's got to hold him accountable. And like he said, at times maybe he went past the line and crossed the line that he regrets at certain points of his career. But 
at the end of the day, he wants to win, and he's and he's matured a lot, I think, over the past couple of years. And so that was just my thoughts on kind of the ending segment there that you you guys were speaking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt like I had to bring that up because a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. We get asked that, like, we get DM that, we get comments on our YouTube about that, for sure. So it's good. And letting yeah. him speak, like, letting him speak about it's good because he can, I don't think too many people ask him, like, on a, like, an open, more public setting about mm-hmm. that. So it's good. I think people can hear about it and understand that he's just, like, crazy competitive. and It's good. Absolutely. I think, uh, um, yeah, I think that, Usually we're a lot very we're usually a fun crazy kind of podcast and we usually are like we like we know all these guys these are, these guys are our boys like like I said we've been playing with these guys forever and like we're good friends and everything like that but I felt like today was a more serious topic and it needed to be a more serious topic because no one wants to reminisce when they didn't do as well as they expected or wanted or they felt like they like they didn't perform as a team you know at the Olympics let, let alone yeah and talk about you know. Maybe not the most positive stuff. So I was like, you know what? I was like, we should definitely like, I don't know. It was like one of those things where it was like, it was a serious kind of topic for usually not always serious guy, but I don't know. I feel like it needed to be discussed. I don't think a lot of people, not even I really knew what was going on in the Olympics. I mean, not that I know anything, but like I said, we're pretty well connected. We know it's one of the players on the team. So it was interesting to hear. That's the first time I heard from any USA member really, um, really like kind of in, in, in detail what kind of, went on and we're very very grateful because he didn't have to share all that with us like or, or the audience or anything mm-hmm. like that because that, I mean that's team stuff you know what I'm saying and uh, we're very grateful for that and I think uh, uh, out of system out of some fans like I said much love and that's what we're trying to aim it for we're trying to kind of get the, the incredible rich details um, but I think I don't know I, I love the interview although it wasn't maybe our most f- funny interview it was our most informational uh, detail Especially interview. the timing of it, yeah. Yeah, we want to make sure. sure we get somebody on and talk about that. Hundred um, percent. Well, my man, uh, Joe, you got king of the court to get to. We talked about that in the intro. You got a king of the court to get to. You got to go <laughs> ball out against some Olympians, man. I gotta go. Tr- one, I gotta go practice. I gotta go practice beach for the first time in seven years. Like I haven't played beach in seven years, and then they're just rolling me out today against a couple Olympians. So I feel you're, like it's you're uh, vlogging it, right? You're vlogging it. Yeah, I Good feel man. like also that um, I feel like this is like some setup where they don't tell the person or they don't tell the team where it's just like they're bringing in these like two idiots to just show how good these other teams are. <laughs> they're just like putting some like regular guys out there and they're like hyping them up like, oh, you guys are coming to the king of the court and they put us in this <laughs> tough pool. We just these two idiots that are showing up. So, so you're like you're like the gladiators out there that are like they always like have the slaughter out there that just like get killed by the main guys. <laughs> you're the entertainment baby. You're you're like the chum for the sharks. But who knows? Maybe you'll do well. I think you do well. We'll be watching again. Um, well, by the time you listen, it'll be too late. Unless Joe makes it to the second day. If Joe if if Joe makes it to the second day, it will not be too late by the time you hear this podcast. If you hear, or if I make the down. final on Sunday. Exactly, exactly. And we'll all be watching again. I'll be live streaming the whole event. You, you, well, like I said, you have already seen it if, if, if you were watching this at this point. Anyways, guys, Joe, get your ass to practice. Make ass some proud. You wear the asses and board shorts, yeah? Cannot. We don't have matching ones. Damn it. Oh, well, too bad. Could have. Uh, well, if we had two, if I had two pairs. Too bad. Too bad. Well, sort of usual. my fault. <laughs> I guess that's technically on me since I <laughs> am in charge. Of all that stuff, in a way, but <laughs> no, it's whatever, man. All right. Well, remember, if you can't handle the goddamn kitchen, this has been another episode presented by Out of System. <laughs>